Hello and welcome. Today's topic is New Year's resolutions. We all make them, but we don't always keep them. The trick to this year's resolutions is to actually keep them. And perhaps maybe your New Year's resolution this year is to tone up, get fit, or maybe even quit smoking. Joining me right now is an aerobics instructor and fitness trainer, Sarah Bangle. Sarah, nice to see you today. Hello, Jason. How Thank are you? Thank you for being here. I'm doing well. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for having me here. You're very welcome. So, New Year's resolutions, as I stated, we all make them. Sometimes we don't always keep them. But I find that the most common New Year's resolution is to get fit, yes. lose weight, maybe even tone up a little bit. Um, tell us, what advice can you offer to those people out there watching that have those goals in mind? Well, for everyone, I think New Year's resolutions are very important. One of the easiest things to do is to make a plan and then try and commit yourself to that improved self for the rest of the year. One of the hardest things to do is to find the willpower in order to implement that plan and stick to it. So commitment's difficult. It's not easy to come by. Mm -hmm. Sometimes having a workout buddy can help. Someone that can call you up and make you go when you feel like staying home, and you can do the same thing for them. Interesting. So being a fitness instructor and um, a class instructor as well, mm -hmm. what are some of the common reasons your clients come to you, and what are their goals? Well, usually when they come in, they're looking to be in better shape. If they have a New Year's resolution to get into shape for the whole year for the rest of their lives, or if they have a high school reunion to go to, mm -hmm. or going on a cruise, they want to look better in their cruise wear. Everyone has their own personal reasons for coming down and wanting to work out. But I always advise them not to make their initial plan too unrealistic and too difficult to follow. A simple plan is usually best. And one of the best things to do is to find a nice simple diet plan, a nice healthy way to look at food as opposed to thinking that food is your enemy. That's never the case. We just have to make healthy choices. Right. So working with Weight Watchers, as you talked about earlier in the show, and then incorporating an exercise program with that just to make sure that you're keeping the weight off. Interesting. And for people that are maybe just starting out in fitness for the first time ever, mm -hmm. um, what are some suggestions that you have for them? Well, when they come into my studio, when I teach the cardio kickboxing classes, mm -hmm. I always tell them to go easy. Whether they want to do low impact or high impact, I gear it towards every level of person as they come down to exercise. Some people are already exercising on a regular basis and they just want to add to their routine. Some people haven't exercised for years. Some women have had children and they want to get into better shape. Mm -hmm. So as they come down, I tell them, take it easy, find out what you can do. Worst class, first class rule means you don't know what to expect. And everybody has to walk and work another day, so I don't want them to hurt themselves. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes you do end up sore the next day, which is not a bad thing at oh, all. It's actually a good sore. If you sore. feel it in the right places, it's a great <laughs> thing. You know you did a good job when you're sore in the right places. Mm -hmm, exactly. So people um, who might be embarrassed to go to the gym, they don't necessarily have to go. There are mm -hmm. exercises that they can do right in the comfort of their own home. Sure, thinking fitness at home is really the, the best first step. Sometimes find it difficult uh, to motivate themselves when they're at home. So going out to a gym can motivate people a little bit more mm -hmm. to be somewhere and have someone tell them what to do. And that's usually what they tell me when they do come to the school. When they take the cardio kickboxing classes, they say, thank you so much. And when they're at home, they say they find it difficult to make themselves do it. But I always give them ideas before they leave, things that they can do at home. Interesting. So for people that um, they want to lose weight, even tone their bodies a little bit, do you suggest that they drop the weight that they want to drop first and then start with weights, or can they combine both uh, programs together? I always recommend that they start a diet plan first. That way their body can acclimate to it, their mind can get used to it, and their metabolism has to adjust a little bit. Once they start a diet routine, that way they can start exercising once they've been at least a week or two into that new eating regimen then the exercise will start helping the pounds come off more quickly and more effectively. Yeah. And as a fitness instructor, you can probably vouch for that fitness is the lifestyle. Absolutely. When I started teaching cardio kickboxing, I lost 40 pounds. Mm -hmm. It was absolutely creating a mindset that I knew I could stick to. Wow. And you're so thin now. I mean, you, looking at you, you look like you've been thin your whole life. Uh, yes. The case wasn't always so. I do like food and I do like to <laughs> eat. But learning how to make the better choices of food, there are so many things that you can eat that you don't realize aren't healthy to eat. Right. And learning about food, learning about your body, it's a very personal combination finding the foods that are right for each person. Mm -hmm. And you have to find a diet that's easy to stick to, too. Weight Watchers that's is great. That's the problem, yes. They teach you healthy eating mindset. So what does your daily diet consist of as a trainer? 
Oh, I had to learn how to eat in the morning. I wasn't a morning food person. I'm not either. <laughs> it's more important to eat in the morning and get most of your carbohydrates in in the morning. So I try and eat two to three breakfasts wow. before I even leave the house. So I like cereals, but I eat whole grain cereals. I eat whole oats. I add lots of nuts. I try to incorporate dried fruit and lots of fresh fruit so that I'm getting that at least during the day and a lot of water, but not too much water. So during the rest of the day, someone once told me that eating like a king for breakfast, a prince <laughs> for lunch, and a pauper for dinner mm -hmm. is a great way so that you're getting the larger portion of your food to give you the correct amount of energy in order to exercise if you exercise in the morning. And if you exercise at night, eat something light so that you're not working out on a heavy meal. Hmm. Interesting. So what are some exercises? You brought along some weights. I'm looking around the studio here. Oh, we're going to have some fun, Jason. We are. I'm looking Hope forward to it. To we're dressed out. for it, too. <laughs> we're, we're, we're comfortable up here, you know, getting fit for the new year. What are some exercises that we're going to take a look at today? Well, we're going to start with some things that you can do at home very simply, very easily. And if you'd like to get up with me, we sure. can really get ready and get Let's going. Let's get going. Let's try it out here. Okay. Well, you know what? We'll, let's get set up a little bit. Um, let's take a quick break here. When we come back, we're going to get right into it, do some squats, some abs, and some weights. We'll be right back. Great. And welcome back. Today we're talking about New Year's resolutions and getting fit for 2013. I just finished a great interview with an aerobics instructor and fitness trainer, Sarah Bangle, and she's here joining me right now. We are going to get down to work now. It is time to get serious and Absolutely. do some exercises that you could do right at home in the comfort of your own home. So, Sarah, what are we going to do this segment? Very serious stuff. We're going to work our legs. We're going to start with squats, something okay. that you can do while you're washing dishes. You want to make sure your feet are nice and far enough apart. As you squat down, making sure that your knees go out in the direction of your toes. Thinking about your posture. Good posture in everything you do helps you to keep it good for the rest of your life. So you're squatting, working your legs in order to burn more calories. The larger muscle groups help you to do that. If you curl your toes up, making sure that when your toes are curled up, your weight is into your heels so that you're working your thighs more into your hamstring and your glutes. Pulling your abs in, thinking about a muscle helps you to work it. Now if we pulse down and stay nice and low into it, nice short range motion helps to increase the intensity a that little bit. That it's doing. So as we stay down, once you're working with this and you start to feel the burn, that's when you can come up and then start again. So we're going to come up, but we're going to start to add something to the workout oh, to make it a little go. harder. We have goodies. We have resistance bands. Res Resistance bands are great for toning and shaping the arm muscles. Okay. So we're going to include the squats with the resistance band. So as we squat and we pull, pushing our knees out in the direction of our pinky toe, making sure that we keep our feet nice and wide. And as we squat down, pulling our abs in, keep the resistance into the band, making sure that it doesn't go slack. <laughs> no slacking, Jason. No. Oh, <laughs> not at all. Great for the shoulders. Great for toning, shaping, and sculpting arm muscles for those nice little spaghetti stretches shirts or tank tops. Now once we go down, pulse and pull. Really keep that tension, Woo. pull your abs in, shoulders back, and don't forget to breathe, Jason. That's <sighs> it. Helps you to keep strong and feed your body with oxygen. And keep going. How does oh, that feel? Good? It's burning. All it feels right. so good. Let's change it up a little bit. We're going to put the bands down. Okay. We're going to pick up the weights. As we work with these weights, we're going to try some lunges instead. These All are right. for you. Thank you. So these are one pound weights. You can work nice and easy with these. We're going to start with our right foot forward, making sure that we have our knee over our front foot. Again, abs tucked in, shoulders back, chin up, chest out. We're going to start with bicep curls. As you lunge down, lifting your heel up off the floor and back, making sure that you keep your shoulders stacked directly over your hip and over your knee. All right. Breathe as you lunge. If we keep it low, once we go down, we can just stay and pulse. We can even include tricep, pulsing back, working the back of our upper arms, and squeeze. Sometimes to increase the intensity, just being still, <sighs> makes you feel it even more. Yes, it does, because now you're focusing on it. And these are nice, low-impact, easy moves that you can do at home, like going up and down stairs at home. If you're making sure that you want to do something of a little more intensity, you can buy jump ropes. All of these things are easy to find in local stores, but what okay. I want to do 
do with you now, Jason? Lay you down on the floor and do All some right. abs. Everybody's Love favorite some abs. workout area. I think everybody's most worst problem area, too, mine included. Okay. Everybody loves abs. <sighs> it's the reward for their hard work. That's what I always say at the end of every class. Because so we get class, to lay down. <laughs> oh, yes. You get to rest just to work harder. Okay. So think about good form. Okay. Hands behind your head so you're supporting your neck. And as you crunch your body up, you want to think to compress down into your abs. Keeping your chin away from your chest, eyes toward the ceiling, and roll your shoulders up and down. You don't want to ever throw your body. Don't use momentum, but just use your muscles. Compress and crunch and squeeze. Excellent form, Jason. Great. Thank you. So now if you stay up and pulse, keeping your body suspended up in the air, shoulder blades off the floor, increase the intensity again. That's great. You have Thank excellent you. form. I love I'm it. I'm still strong. How about that? <laughs> I haven't been to a gym in a, I can't even tell you. Oh, well, we'll fix that, <laughs> won't we? So lay down and rest for a second. <sighs> now That's we're part of the workout. Oh, just uh, kidding. <laughs> well, we It's have feeling great room. so far. A lot of people want to stop at my school, too, but I help them to well, keep on keep going. Keep going. So now we're going to work our obliques. You work okay. the central quadrants of your abs. Now we want to work the outer. Everybody wants a nice, tight, slim waist. So if you put your left leg over your right knee, okay. you're going to use your right elbow to cross over. So both hands are going to okay. go behind your head. Reach across with your right elbow to your left knee. That's it. And roll up and roll down. You keep your left elbow base down on the floor. That gives you a good, consistent range of motion so that you target your muscles the same way every time. Excellent. That's what gets you those best uh. results and that definition. And this really is like low key, perfect for somebody who's just starting out. Like I start to feel the burn, but it's nothing crazy. It doesn't make me want to give up, and it shouldn't make you want to give up either. Plus, it's cumulative. If you do just a few minutes, five minutes at a time, exactly. and do this three times a day, you're getting plenty of exercise. Now pulse up, Jason. Increase that intensity just a little bit. Keep that crunch till you feel the burn. Oh, I feel it. It feels great, though. Oh, good. Don't give burn up. Burn is best. <laughs> and lay down and uh -huh. rest. Awesome. So now we're going to do something that's considered an all-body exercise. We're going to do okay. planks. So as you come up, we're going to work side by side. I'll do these with you just so you don't feel alone. Okay. All right. Always great to work out with a buddy. <laughs> Buddies help to motivate you all the time. Okay. So we're going to go down to our elbows okay. and our knees, lifting our feet up in the air, and think of a straight line between your knees and your hips and your shoulders. Once you hold your body in place, I want you to think about your abs nice and tight. So if it's easier to be on your knees, or if you think you can hold it up a little higher and stay on your toes just like you, because I know you like a good Oh, I could have gone on my knees? Oh, I was I up on my toes have. the whole time. Oh, well. I try to make it doable for beginners or advanced people. So hold tight. Now squeeze your legs. Okay. Squeeze your butt, squeezing your glutes, and down and rest. Never go to the point of strain. Remember that. It's important okay. to work with your body and listen to your body, but always learn to push it when it's able to. So we still have our knees down and we still have that straight line, but now we're working more into our arms and our chest and our okay. upper back. If we want to make it harder, we're going to put our feet down, lift our knees up, Squeeze your abs nice and tight. Squeeze your quadriceps. Remember to breathe. Thighs. Always breathing. <laughs> Feed your body with oxygen. It mm -hmm. works. Don't lock your elbows out. Nice and tight. How's your body feeling? I'm feeling good. We stay here for about an hour? Sure. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I won't make no you do problem. that. No problem. And down to your knees. So those are some things that everyone can do at home. Wow, so remember, great stuff. Any physical injuries that you have have to be addressed. You have to work with your ability and not injure yourself any worse. You want to make Excellent. sure that you stay safe, especially if you're working out at home. So short of getting a personal trainer to find out how to work out safely, please use good form. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Sarah. And again, thank this you is all. Me, Jason. This you're very fun. welcome. Glad you enjoyed it. This is all stuff that people can buy inexpensively if they don't oh, want to yes. pay for a gym membership or maybe they feel embarrassed because of the way they look. Lots of these things yeah. are on sale. You can go to Target, Walmart, Kmart. You can go Absolutely. to a dollar store. You don't Great have to stuff. spend a lot of money to get into good shape. That's it's awesome. just all up here. In and the if mind. people would like to join your class or work one-on-one -on -one with you as a trainer, how can they get in touch with you? They can reach me at my school, the Santa Riches Karate School on Main Street, 408A Main Street in Santa Riches Village. And the phone number is 631-878-1212. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Sarah, once again. Thanks thank for coming you, down Jason. today. I had a great yep. time. And I feel sore. 
So I'm going to take a quick break here, towel down a little bit when we come back. One of our guests uh, did join the Weight Watchers program and has a success story to share with all of you. Stay right here. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Today we are talking about New Year's resolutions for 2013. What is yours? For some of our viewers who wrote into our Facebook responses, thank you by the way, some of their New Year's resolutions is to get fit, tone up, quit smoking, and maybe forgive uh, people who have hurt them in their lives and try to close old wounds and moving forward. Well, before we get to all that, joining us right now is another guest whose New Year's resolution this year is to get fit, and he has joined the Weight Watchers program and has a Fabulous success story to stay with all of you. JT, welcome. Nice to see you. Thank you. You too. Thank you. So you joined Weight Watchers earlier this month. It's January. Yes, January 6th. And um, you're already down 10 pounds. How do 10 you feel? 10.2. 10.2 pounds. How do you feel about I that? I feel good. My breathing actually is a lot better, though. It's amazing what 5 or 10 pounds does for you, believe mm -hmm. it. Um, it was in two weeks, though. I dropped 8.4 my first week on my Weight wow. Watchers plan, which is excessive. Don't get me wrong. You always drop big the first week. Then I lost 1.8 last week. I shouldn't say only, but... I still went down, which is good. So. so what makes you drop more in the first week as opposed <clears throat> to the other weeks? I think the initial shock your body mm -hmm. from the change of what I eat, you know, as, uh, to more fruits, vegetables, a lot more water I drink now, you know. I cut back on my soda altogether. I drink diet soda because there's no points to it. Right. You know, <laughs> other than that, though, I mean, just trying to watch what I eat and balance everything with the protein and the fat and the carbs and all. So. Wow. A little bit. And to be down 10 pounds in less than a month, I mean, that's a tremendous Correct. accomplishment. You must be so proud of yourself. I'm very, very proud. They say the average is like half a pound to two pounds is an yeah. average a week. But at some point, you just plateau and you don't always lose, but it doesn't mean you gain either, you know? Right. So what was your breaking point for you to join Weight Watchers to get the weight off of you? What is your goal, if you don't mind my asking? Uh, my personal goal is like 190, well. you know? Excellent. So, so what was your breaking point that made you join the program? Uh, so some of my clothes I couldn't fit anymore, you know, like try to mm -hmm. button jeans, you know, we all do that, it will suck in. But <laughs> you lay down on the bed and try to zip it up. Yes, you know, and more comes out than goes in, so <laughs> it's a problem, but yeah. Interesting. So have you joined the gym or do any type of exercises as well to help you? I did. I uh, was at the Planet Fitness last year when I was on Weight Watchers, though, and then mm -hmm. I stopped going, though, for a while. But um, I plan to go back to the gym also to join, you know, to join up, though, because it actually does help me. I'm just trying to get used to the diet again, though, and everything. Mm -hmm. You know, the lifestyle change and eating more like that. So, a little bit out of time, gradual. Excellent, good stuff. And so, you pro you probably plan to join the gym and, and probably tone up as well. So, what is your goal overall for that? Like, where do you want to be a year from now? Let's say. I would love to be down because I you know I'm like 30 pounds, about 188. Then I'm going to be hitting at the 188, mm -hmm. 190. I would. I Never had a washboard, stomach, or six-pack. I would love Neither to be able to flatter, you know. <laughs> I'm more like a flat iron when I am, you know. <laughs> I mean, I'd never be like the David Beckham body, you know, that washboard thing. But just to be a little more in shape, though, so I look better in my swimsuit and my clothes in general, you know. So doing Weight Watchers and being on the points program, how has, you know, how difficult is it to pick such a plan like that and really stick to it? You know, it's actually, I was on it like eight years ago, too, mm -hmm. uh, like seven years, 2005, and they had um, points then. But they had different kind of little charts you went by. Now the Points Plus came out a couple of years ago when Jennifer Hudson signed on. And now they revised it again to the 360, which is still the Points Plus, but a little, little tweak here and there, though. But yeah. it's not so really hard. You don't think, I get 46 points a day. And it doesn't sound like a lot, but it actually is. I mean, you right. try to watch what you eat, and we actually write down everything that we eat to keep track of the points. Is there a lot of foods that you love that you had to cut out? Well, fast food. Who doesn't love fast food, you know? <laughs> we all do. But uh, that this I. True. I gave that up though, but I can still have it though. Actually, though, it's like mm -hmm. I have a book and all that I bought. It tells you like points of every item and everything you can have. Like you know, I told you I had like a donut last night. We were talking earlier, and um, it was five points. But I wanted it, so you know what? Yeah. I still had points. It wasn't a big deal. So what's good about this program is, like you said, you had the donut, which was five points. You can, how do you want to put it? Um, subtract out five points from someplace else. You just eat less the next. Well, time you, you never roll over the next day, correct? But I have like so much a day. Plus, you get forty-nine flex points a week week mm -hmm. additional. So you can do that and if you do activity, you get more points as well. Giving up fast foods, do you ever have that temptation to drive through the McDonald's or the Burger King drive? You know, I do sometimes so, but when I do it now though, I get like the grilled chicken salad. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy with that. All right, mm -hmm. so you're improvising. You're still going for your fast food, yep. but you're eating healthier. Healthier, absolutely. About it. Well. I try not to avoid fast food altogether, but I can. I eat, I eat out a lot, but I try to go to restaurants more, you know. Yeah. Interesting. So what is your advice to people at home who are watching who want to lose weight and maybe 
maybe try the Weight Watchers program, see if it works for them. Is it difficult? You know, I think the initial going through, like I said, going through the door and all like that to get to it, sign up, is the hardest part. And the first week is always the hardest yeah. because you've got to get used to doing certain things, watching what you eat, though, you know. You get discouraged if you don't lose a lot sometimes, you know. And as I stated with uh, Sarah, uh, the fitness instructor who was on right before yeah. you, it is a lifestyle. Fitness is a lifestyle. Eating healthy is a lifestyle. It's often very difficult for a lot of people. So the key is, is just to stick with it and, and see it out if it's something you absolutely have to do. And absolutely. this was something you absolutely had to do for yes. yourself. More, more like a, for mentally for myself, though, you know. I mean, you, we all think, care what people think about us. You know, we all do yeah. it. But it's more for myself. I feel better about myself, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what it's about. I mean, we, we never view ourselves the way other people view us. You know, we look at ourselves and, you know, like, for instance, I look at myself and I see $10 million worth of plastic surgery. But everybody else is, you know, oh, you look fine, you look great, whatever. But it's you, the fact that you're doing it for yourself, that's what makes it so much better and, yes. and probably easier in some way, too. So, well, thank you for sharing that successful story with us. Maybe your New Year's resolution this year is to um, maybe forgive somebody who's hurt you in the past and, and try to heal some old wounds and move forward. So we posted a couple of statuses on our Facebook page, The Jason Galka Show, and got some of your replies, which we're going to read through now, and maybe you'd like to discuss some of them with me. Absolutely. Our first post that we posted several weeks ago was, can you forgive someone who hurt you, even though they didn't say, I'm sorry. Well, first of all, talking about forgiveness, we've all been hurt. You know, somebody's always done something to us that just upset our feelings. Does any story come to your mind sitting here right now? I know I'm putting you on the spot for this, but um, <laughs> where you either forgave somebody or didn't forgive them? Um, the top of my head, nothing really comes to mind specifically, though, but we've all had, like I said, someone that's done something, though. I think it depends on what was actually done to you. Right. You know, Maybe how long you've known a person and, and things like that. Because you Usually, it's, I guess it's safe to say that the most common people that hurt us or hurt our feelings, I should say, is our loved ones, spouse, boyfriends, girlfriends, husband, wives, friends, family even. But like you said, it probably depends on the situation. So let's read some of these situations now from our viewers. Our first viewer is actually one of our YouTube viewers who comes from Albany. Her name is June, and she writes, I was in a domestic violent relationship for years. I forgave him so he wouldn't have control of my life, and I could go on knowing that chapter of my life was closed and my new blessed life has begun. Hmm, it's kind of those, it's kind of like a what would you do kind what of thing. What would Jesus do, WWJD? <laughs> I don't know, what would you do? Uh, I mean, I don't know if I could forgive someone. I mean, for me personally, though, I guess you would have to for your own mental sake, though. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think I would need, you know, their <coughs> approval at that point. Once you actually walk out, you've made that choice to leave something. Right. So, I mean, you forgive them, and I think at that point. Because you still had to forgive them, though. You're trying to get back at them, whatever. With them, I think you would stay more to find a way to get back at them. Right. And I think it really depends on the person and, yes. and just how violent was it. I mean, not that violence is ever the answer or there's good violence. About, it's all bad violence, but I think it really depends on the person. And for June, I think she made the right decision because nobody should have to be abused in their relationship. No. You're with somebody because you love them, you want to be with them, and, and they should always be treated with the most utmost respect. Our next viewer writes, and um, they send this, this letter anonymous. Anonymously, they write, I hold a grudge against my brother and his wife for scamming my 92-year-old grandmother out of her home, a home she built over 60 years ago with my grandfather, a home where she raised her family. My grandmother has been through a lot in her life, having to bury all three of her children and husband. When my youngest brother got married in 2006, they asked to live with her until they found a place. Being the loving grandmother that she was, she let them. They then told her to sign papers so that they would be able to take care of her in case she got ill. What she did it know was they made her sign the deed to her home over to them. They told her if she wanted to continue to live in the home, she needed to pay 1500 a month in rent or she would need to leave. They would curse at her on a daily basis and tell her that the house wasn't hers anymore. She then left home to live with me but always wanted her house back. After asking my brother and his wife if she could have a room back in her home, they told her no, they didn't want her there. After I consulted a lawyer, she was able to have my brother and his wife removed from the house so she can live her last days there, but upon her death, he would retain the house back. When she was able to go back into the home, it was a mess. Carpets had been ripped out, moldings ripped off the walls, etc., etc. He never even came to see her when she was on her deathbed or came to the wake or funeral. Jason, there is nothing they can do to change how I feel about them or change the hatred I have towards both of them. Pretty intense stuff. It's absolutely horrible, you know. Um, you know, I've, in a case like that, I, I, this is one of those situations where you have 
have to look and say maybe some wounds can't be taken away, but maybe time can kind of not heal it, but make it easier. Cushion it a little bit? Yeah, make it a little easier over time. Yeah, I think every family has a story, not that harsh, obviously, where someone's, yeah. you know, done something with a, a will or money. When it comes to family member, they hurt somebody, though, but that's awful, though, as far as taking someone's house off from them, though, but I'm a firm believer in karma. Yeah. What goes around, comes around, is that, though, this and can true. you forgive them? We're not in that situation so we really don't know. Yeah. You know, I don't know if I could. If that was but my should this person who wrote the letter forgive just <clears throat> for their own benefit to be able to put it behind them? You they know, need to find a place in their own mind, I personally believe, to file that away or put it somewhere because anger is like you know, poison. Mm -hmm. It will eat you if you don't get rid of it. This you can't hold true. on to it forever. So again, it really depends on the situation and the people. Okay, our next viewer, Danielle from Manorville, writes us, I came home for lunch one day to my boyfriend at the time to his puzzled face like, he had something to tell me. After several minutes of pleading with him to tell me, he finally blurted out he was leaving me. I was in shock, and days later I found out he was back with his ex, and that's the reason he left me. Weeks later, still in distraught, I wasn't eating, drinking, or sleeping much. Then a month later, he arrived back at our home begging for my forgiveness. Although I took him back, not why even to this day, not sure why even to this day, excuse me, he had even gotten engaged, we even gotten engaged, and then finally after months of our engagement, I came to my senses and left him. Some hurts cannot be forgiven, and even though I took him back and we went on months to spend together, I never truly forgave him and still haven't. Although now that I'm married to a wonderful man and we have the most perfect relationship, I still cannot come to forgive my ex for cheating on me. That's an interesting story because she's moved on. Yep. She's, she's married now. Um, you know, she's past the engagement. This was something that was of her past. I think it's something that if you do have such a wonderful relationship, with a wonderful man, forgive and forget and move forward. But that's my opinion. When no, I like agree with that. I mean, if you actually, that's still bothering you this much, you're not over that, and that's a problem. That would be for me personally. Mm -hmm. You know, but I don't know how her husband would feel. <laughs> I mean, as far as <laughs> that, but she's moved on for the most part, but has she emotionally moved on? Right. You don't know. Unless it's just one of those things like, you know what, you just hurt me, and I'm just not going to forgive the hurt in general, not necessarily the situation. You know, if that no, makes I any know. sense. But the fact that you still don't feel the need to bring it up years later when you're already remarried with a new life and all. Yeah. Something's still festering that, you know, it shouldn't be at this point. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, our next Facebook post that we had posted was Forgive and Forget. Is it possible or do you continue to hold a grudge and why? Mark from Glen Cove Glen writes us, That's a rather privileged belief not to mention inaccurate. S uh, Sartre was right when he said that hell is other people. There are things that can never be forgiven and there are uh, wrong that can never be set right. Until you realize and fully understand the impact of such abusive and traumatic behaviors on their victims, you will never fully understand why some things can't and shouldn't be forgiven. I guess that's true. It depends if you're in this situation or not, you know? I said we've all been through stuff, but it depends on what it is. There's different kinds of trauma out there and what's traumatic for somebody is not for somebody else, you know? This is true. This is true. Okay, our next Facebook post that we had posted was New Year's resolution stories. We asked you to share it with us. Nancy from South Hall writes, I've been a smoker for 20 years and I've tried so many times to quit. I've even gone cold turkey and tried the gum and patches, but nothing seems to work. Jason, what can you do to help? You were actually a smoker yourself. We were talking a little bit years. before. How did you quit? Mine was actually, I tried several times, you know, up, down, whatever like that, quit and mm -hmm. started back. But when I had to have my uh, gallbladder out like three years ago, I actually stopped smoking before surgery. See if I could do it though, when I came out, like, I'll go another day day, another day, and then three yeah. years later. I'm and how still, difficult was it for you? It, it was awful. <laughs> you know, like that, it's more like not even the smokes after three days, nicotine's out of your body. Mm -hmm. More like the hand to mouth, like thing. So it's more of the motion. It's the oral fixation for it. Yeah, because you used to have something like that, you know. So like try fake cigarettes or try this, you know, mm -hmm. but I gained 30, 40 pounds wow. also, so. Interesting. Yes. Huh. But so what would be your advice to Nancy out in South Oak you know trying to quit? Um, for me personally, I don't think the patch and all, for me personally, would have work though because at some point you're always going to have one last patch one last cigarette there's always one last something you know True. But I think cold turkey for me was the best way but you give it a shot you'll quit when you're actually ready yeah, no one can tell true. you when to quit. Patch is going to help you if... Uh, when there's a will, there's a way. Yes, there is. All right, excellent. Well, we were so comfortable today. We got to work out a little bit. We did some... Well, at least I did. We did some exercises. We taught you guys at home what you can do right from the comfort of your own home. You don't even have to join the gym to get fit. So um, we're just about out of time. I want to wrap it up. Thank you so much for joining.
joining us today. And if you need help with your New Year's resolution, give us a call or an email, thejasonshow at yahoo.com, and we'll be happy to help you. See you next time. Thanks for watching.